G'day guys and welcome to our lesson on diodes. I'm going to draw how a diode is represented in a circuit. Say the green line is the wire. The diode is a arrow like that with a vertical line at its tip. And then the circuit continues. Now, something new. If the current is flowing that way, we say the diode is in forward bias. It's almost like the current is flowing through this arrow in the direction that triangle is facing. But if the current is flowing that way, we say the diode must be in reverse bias. And depending on which way you put this diode into a circuit, so for instance, if the large end of the battery was there and the small end there, that's the representation of the battery, we say, okay, that is the negative side of the battery, that is the positive. Charge flows from the positive to the negative, even though we know electrons flow from the negative around to the positive. So ch charge is flowing that way. We would say this diode is in forward bias there. But if that battery were reversed, so that its small line was there, if, if, if its negative side were on the same side as the diode, now we know the charge is actually going to be flowing around the circuit the other way. Boom, through that vertical line there. That is a diode in reverse bias. So let's discuss how the diode's behavior changes, whether it's in forward bias or reverse bias. The first thing to understand is it's definitely a non-ohmic device. That means it has a resistance that is not constant. So if we look at a graph here, the forward bias, with voltage on the horizontal and current on the top, an ohmic device has the law, V equals IR, Ohm's law. So V on R equals I, or 1 on R times V equals I. This looks a lot like M X equals Y, you know, something from methods. So if we were to graph V along the horizontal and I on the vertical, as we did here, we'd expect the gradient of an ohmic device to have a straight line with gradient 1 on R here. But a non-ohmic device does not have to have a straight line because R doesn't have to be constant. The gradient, 1 and R, also does not have to be constant. So with a diode, we see this kind of behavior. There's some voltage. We'll say here 0 0.6 volts. And the diode, when more current, we'll say, you know, more current flows through it, it refuses to take more than that amount of voltage. It'll just go up and up and up. So no matter... No, no, no matter what current here flows through it, the voltage will not get any greater than this set amount. So a diode in forward bias is very picky about its, no apostrophe, its voltage. Let's uh, discuss now reverse bias. In reverse bias, the resistance pretty much becomes infinite. The diode will not let any current flow through it and it acts like a resistor with a resistance of a huge magnitude. So if you had a battery here and then a diode in reverse bias and then a resistor, if this resistor is 1 ohm, we can say this diode in reverse bias has resistance of, you know, 9,999 ohms or higher. So if this is a 10 volt battery, we'll find a voltage drop of zero over this particular resistor, but a voltage drop across the diode of the full 10 volts because it's hogging all the voltage. But then again, the meaning of the voltage becomes very confused because there's no actual current flowing through this circuit, or the current is effectively 
zero, we should say. So that's the difference between forward bias and reverse bias. Let's look at a question involving a diode in forward bias. I'll scale this down, move it up. So we have this circuit, a 10 volt battery with two other elements, one diode in forward bias and one resistor and that resistor can be 50 ohms. The battery can supply 10 volts and we'll say this diode has a very picky choice about its voltage. It will only ever take 0 0.3, no, 0 0.6 volts. And the answer we want is what is the current flowing through this circuit here. So there's two steps here. One, determine how much voltage must be across this resistor. If there's 10 volts being given to this circuit and all the volts have to be dumped as the coulombs go around, then if 0 0.6 volts are dumped here, the voltage below must be 10 take away 0 0.6, that's 9.4 volts. That is the voltage across this resistor, 9.4 volts. The second step is to extrapolate from there using Ohm's law, V equals IR, for this particular component here. The voltage equals 9.4, which equals the current multiplied by 50, so 9.4 over 50 is equal to 0.188 amps. That is the current through this circuit here. It would get very tricky if you tried to calculate the total resistance of the circuit. It's better to just narrow down to one component and say, hey, if I solve the current going through here, I've effectively solved the current going through the entire circuit. Let's look now at an example question where the diode is in reverse bias. So to do this I'm going to set up quite a complicated little circuit. There's a battery. Here's our first diode. Here is our second diode. And here is our third diode. And I'll add in here some light bulbs. And maybe one back here. For this scenario, let's select which light bulbs we would expect to be on. Well, current is able to flow through this diode it's able to flow through this diode and to this diode. So we would expect this light to be on, this one and this one here. If I now put one of those diodes in reverse bias, all of a sudden I've effectively popped a resistor into this track here that has a resistance you know, on, on the order of something huge. If that is the case, very little current will make its way into this track compared to this track over here. So even though, you know, obeying the laws of parallel circuits, this, these components here and these components here have to have the same voltage, the current here is going to be a lot bigger than the current over there. So with this arrangement, you would expect this light to glow, well, very, 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 very dimly. Let's change it up again. If I swap this diode up here into reverse bias, 
which light globes would we expect to glow? This diode here is on what I call the main track of the circuit. All the charges have to pass through this part here in order to go around the circuit in any way. If this diode is therefore in reverse bias, it's effectively putting a resistance of something huge on the entire circuit. So the total resistance of the circuit will be massive. If the total resistance is massive and the voltage has to remain the same, supplied by the battery, the current through the circuit will become very, very low. So with this diode in reverse bias, we expect this light globe not to glow, this one not to glow, and this one not to glow. By swapping over these diodes, we can change the way a circuit behaves. And it gets very interesting when you put a diode in parallel with some other component like a resistor. Look to the example questions to see that happening.